There are 30 essential micronutrients that we need to survive and thrive. And there is one type of food that provides more than any other, organs, nature's multivitamin. But is the nutritional value enough to justify eating a food with the same taste and texture going down as most other foods do coming out? I learned about its nutrient profile and started eating beef liver every day to find out. Why liver? Because it has more nutrients than any other organ and it's also the one that my butcher happens to have available. Before reviewing its nutritional profile and forcing myself to eat it, I want to know if there's any historical or anthropological evidence suggesting that humans should eat organs. The fossil record shows that our species began developing larger brains and bodies around the same time that our prehistoric ancestors started eating animals. While we can't be certain what specific parts of the animal our hunter-gatherer ancestors were eating, we can look at modern tribes and predatory animals to get a better idea. Many indigenous tribes treasure organ meats, often providing them as a prize to the person responsible for the kill. Predatory animals behave similar, showing a preference for the organs over the muscle meat and saving the best ones for the alpha of the group. When they're fed diets consisting solely of muscle meat, carnivorous animals in captivity will develop serious health problems including brain damage and losing their reproductive capabilities which are restored once organs are added back to the diet. But even if it turns out that the carnivore diet is optimal for human health, our anatomy is very different than those of predatory animals and the prey that's accessible to modern day tribes is very different than what our ancestors had access to. Most of the megafauna that early humans hunted are now extinct while government regulations and activist groups prevent modern tribes from hunting large mammals or using the same hunting tactics that our ancestors would employ. Maybe after eating a mammoth, barbecuing a jungle, or chasing a herd of bison over the edge of a cliff, there would be enough calories and nutrients that we would just leave the organs for mother nature. Modern day humans are pretty wasteful, so maybe our ancestors behaved the same way. But that seems unlikely because despite having access to more prey than modern tribes, the fossil record indicates that our hunter-gatherer ancestors were not as well nourished as modern day humans. It seems unlikely that they would waste valuable calories from nutrient-dense foods when their next meal was never guaranteed. In last week's video, I added beef back into my diet after a week with no food, and I was still experiencing some health issues that might be an indication of a lack of micronutrients, which could be resolved through the introduction of organs. Gram for gram, liver contains every micronutrient that we can find in beef, plus a few extras, usually in much higher quantities and for even fewer calories. In just 100 grams of liver, we can get more than half of our recommended daily allowance of 13 different micronutrients, plus smaller quantities of additional nutrients. Many people believe kale to be the healthiest food on the planet, but liver contains a wider variety and higher concentration of micronutrients in more bioavailable forms. The lower bioavailability of kale and other plant foods means that we need to eat more to absorb and utilize the same amount, which might also be true of synthetic nutrients that we find in fortified foods and multivitamins. Take for example vitamin B9, which our bodies utilize as folate, but we find in supplements as folic acid. There is a long and complex process that our bodies can use to convert folic acid into usable folate, but it leaves a lot of folic acid floating around our system, binding to folate receptors, and preventing us from absorbing usable vitamin B9. Our knowledge of nutrition is limited at best, but we understand enough about the basic science to see that liver provides us with more micronutrients than maybe any other natural food on this planet. And as poorly as early humans understood science, their diets were limited to what they could find in their area, making it easy to differentiate between how they felt when eating different foods, helping them seek out the ones that made them perform best. But how will a modern human on an even more limited diet feel after adding organs? To answer this question, I started eating liver every day. This definitely does not look too appetizing, but if it's going to provide me with the nutrients that I need to take my physical and intellectual powers to the next level, then I'm willing to sacrifice whatever it takes. I don't know if it's well done or not done at all, but here goes. It's got the texture of Play-Doh Almost like somebody wrapped some Play-Doh around a steel ball and let it sit there and absorb the steel essence for a few days. Very metallic, but 
this can make me a man of steel, it's worth it. Our taste buds are a nutritional compass that point us towards healthy foods we should feast on and away from toxic ones we should avoid. But the first world has replaced the historical food scarcity with abundance, making most people think the exact opposite. The healthier food is, the worse it should taste. When I was a kid, my parents wouldn't let me leave the dinner table unless I finished my vegetables, and this liver is making broccoli taste like a pastry, so hopefully the same thing is going to start happening happening to this, where I start enjoying the taste of it. But right now, seems unlikely. Not enjoying liver might be response to the novel taste and texture, rather than a disgust with some toxin. Because once I do get it down, it is surprisingly satisfying. Since I've been eating nothing but beef, I've had a voracious appetite where I can just keep eating pounds of beef and still feel hungry. But once I introduce liver, I feel like I can take a single bite and I'm already starting to feel full. When I was a kid, I hated the taste of steak and now I can have two in a single meal and still feel hungry for the third. While if I have even one bite of liver, I'm already starting to feel full. Maybe I'm feeling more full after these meals because I don't want to eat any more than I have to, but it's also not tasting as bad as it was originally. It's more just different than disgusting. Maybe I just need some time to develop a taste for it. If our taste buds are the compass directing us towards what foods we should eat, then our appetite is the fuel gauge telling us how much. The problem is that we can eat a lot of empty calories and fill the tank, but if we're not getting enough nutrients, then the gauge might not move. I have not had a cheat meal in five months now, but it's starting to feel like a cheat meal anytime I'm not eating liver. I almost feel guilty about not eating it. Liver might be incredibly satiating because it has so many micronutrients, but I'm also eating so many calories from meat that there are very few micronutrients from organs that I'm not already eating enough of. I also don't know if it's doing anything because I'm not feeling any different. I was hoping that eating liver would improve my mental and physical performance while addressing the issues that I was experiencing on an all beef diet. But I'm still limping around because of crippling cramps and and spraying my toilet bowl with some chaotic craps, so I don't know that adding liver is really doing all too much. Despite having a wider array of micronutrients than maybe any other natural food, organs still do not contain every micronutrient, leaving some deficiencies in my diet. But organs also weren't the only other part of the animal that our ancestors ate. I know that calcium is an electrolyte that's responsible for healthy bones, so maybe it's not just the organs, but the bones of the animals that I should be eating. Eating bones sounds a bit difficult, but we can can boil them to make broth, which is why next week's mission is to add bone broth to my diet and learn if I can use it to address the issues and optimize my performance. If you want to learn how bone broth and each subsequent individual food that I add to my diet affects me, then subscribe to this channel. Organs contain a wide variety of micronutrients, but not everything that we need to survive and thrive. I'm still deficient in vitamins including E and minerals like calcium. Eating liver every day didn't provide me with any immediate or even noticeable improvements, but that doesn't mean there won't be any long-term benefits, either preventative or additive. Most people, including my future self, do not eat so much beef that we're already getting most of the nutrients that liver provides, which is why I'm going to keep it a part of my diet. Even with the amount of beef that I'm eating, liver still provides some vitamins that I was deficient in, including B7 and B9. And reaching the recommended daily allowance for some of the micronutrients that liver provides doesn't mean that eating more of it can't help us optimize. There is an upper limit to where some nutrients can become toxic, and liver provides excess vitamin A and copper, so eating large quantities every day might not be ideal. But smaller portions a few times a week will reduce your appetite and provide more nutrients nutrients for 20 cents than most meals costing over $20. Getting past the taste can be a great nutritional and financial investment. Thank you for watching and I'm excited to continue sharing this journey with all of you.